Hi everybody and welcome to Abu Dhabi's Live. Now this is a show where we get to sit down with South Africa's most amazing and successful entrepreneurs and business leaders. Now in today's episode we are sitting down with Mr. Kandani Msivi who is one of the co-founders of the uh, Numsa Investment Co uh, Company and also the chairman of um, 360 Live and other companies that he's going to be talking to us about. So Mr. Msivi thank you so much for being part of with Rams Live, and thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to speak that to sit down with you and speak about what you do. Maybe to the people who haven't seen uh, some of the work that you do, and I wonder who's Mr. MCB, but want to find out, maybe tell us about you know briefly in just one minute about uh, Mr. MCB. Yeah, thank you very much, Abu Rams, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm rather founder of a Nomsa Investment Company, mm. I'm the group CEO. All right, um, I joined in um, 2008, uh, mm. 10 years after Lumsa Investment Company was founded, mm. um, and uh, we, we we run a number of companies: uh, uh, Funeral Services, Dove's Group, Life Insurance, uh, 360 Life, uh, Medical Aid, uh, 360 Health. We, um, we administer Cizo Medical Fund, mm. okay. um, and uh, we're also getting into biotechnology, where we are investing in a, in a pharmaceuticals. Um, I'm a, um, um, a husband and a father of mm. five. Ooh, five. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they live in Sentin, uh, born in the valley in a, in a spooky. Uh, I'm a brother to um, uh, three siblings now. Mm. And, and my, my elder sister passed away. Uh, so oh, I'm left okay. with uh, two younger sisters and a brother. That's interesting. But how, how has been your, your, your upbringing? How is my, it? My upbringing, I mean, um, uh, I'm. Like many uh, uh, young black men, I was brought up by my, by my mother. Mm. Uh, my parents uh, uh, divorced uh, in 19, uh, I think it was uh, uh, 76. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been a, uh, quite a tough life. Uh, uh, where, uh, I mean, I've been raised by a single mother having to mm. work, uh, more gardening to, to raise. Uh, Funds to help with the uh, upbringing of uh, of my own siblings. Mm. So mm. I've always been the um, the responsible kid at home. Okay. Uh, okay. Were you the first born? No, I'm the second born. Second. But uh, the first born is a is a is a lady and mm. the one that passed away. Okay. Uh, oh. As the second born uh, uh, man, I, I and you had I to had take to the reins, of course. Take the reins. Yeah. 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 This is this is an African story. No, I mean, this absolutely. Is yeah. Essentially, what we see in the townships as well. But what 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 do you think about the the township economy? I think that's a conversation that we want to have yes. with you yeah. about the township economy. You're very vocal about you know the township economy and also what are the things that are happening in the township economy and what we can improve and some of the things that we, we're going to talk about this thing yes, yes. within the segment and um you 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 are one of the few leaders in the country who i know that are very passionate about the township economy and you yes. coming from the val as well i believe that yes. it is a township area as well yeah. so perhaps maybe share with us um some of your views in terms of the state in its willingness to actually support um, township economy. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, there's a historical context to township economy. Mm -hmm. that, um, uh, in apartheid days, there was deliberate effort to to break and destroy uh, black entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you remember that, uh, if you brew your own uh, beer, the police will come and decant it mm -hmm. and throw it away True. because you had to buy mm -hmm. uh, from South African breweries. Um, if you had a uh, Stock fair to be raided uh, mm -hmm. uh, because they, they thought that uh, the, the money must go into into banks that they control um, and um, it, when you look at a South African economy, mm -hmm. the whole South African economy, other than mining, is a township economy, uh, and, and I say other than mining in terms of uh, its extraction, right? The, the extraction of value by banks, by insurance companies, mm. by food companies, all of them are extracting from the economy, mm. I mean from the, from the townships. Sure. Uh, so when we talk uh, township economy, for some of us, we don't be in a subsistence, in a, in a sense of a guy standing at the corner selling uh, sandwiches. Uh, mm. that, that, that's necessary. But what we mean is that uh, why 
doesn't sow it to have its own black uh, bakery? Why sure. doesn't it have its own insurance company? Why doesn't it have its own uh, bank? Right? Mm. Because we, we buy these services. Uh, the entire financial sector in South Africa relies on black people. So it means that uh, it is a, a township business that is done by white people. Mm. Um, and I, I don't know any, any sector in South Africa that doesn't rely on black people. But, but for some reason, uh, the, the, the systemic nature in which this economy is woven you know, is such that uh, those that have um, the, 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 the economic um, uh, potential can never own the economy because mm. uh, somehow this thing is wired uh, such that uh, mm. um, it, it always results in, uh, in white control. I mean, uh, who buys? Who buys anti? It's, it's black people it's black. in the main. Yeah. Sure. Uh, who buys funeral policy? I mean, there's something as simple as a funeral policy mm. is done by banks. Yeah. Well, we don't have large uh, black companies that are that are actually providing those uh, services. So the 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 whole idea of a township economy is about black people doing their own things. Mm. Uh, it's not us just running uh, tuck shops, but us supplying our own manufactured goods and services sure. um, that we need. Mm. What, and and in, in one of the things that you you know the things that you said, I, I saw an interview with you did with that the team would said, yes. and you said that that the, there was no intervention whatsoever, and I'm quoting you, yes. there was no intervention whatsoever from the state or the municipalities in order to grow our townships, and when they began to mushroom in the townships, they were an entrepreneurial activity, but over time, the interventions that you make on your own, unless that they are supported by the state, they tend to fizzle out. Yes. You feel strongly about these interventions, yes. right? And and what what are they? What are these interventions that you're looking yeah. for from the state? Maybe give us about three or five of them, sure. the interventions that you think the government or mm -hmm. the state needs to do for township. Yeah, uh, the first thing is that um, there is no people on earth that will ever advance without the state. Um, the white businesses advance because of the state. White mm. businesses are uh, thriving today because of the state. There, sure. there, there isn't. I mean, you can give me any sector, I'll show you how they actually rely on the state. Mm. Right? Definitely. Definitely. For, for some reason, um, uh, black people are made uh, uh, not to rely on the state in the same way that other races have relied on the state. Mm. And I'm a, countries that have developed, be they China, be they the US, be they Singapore, be they South Korea. Mm. It's a state intervention. Mm. Nothing, nothing is more powerful and more enabling than the state. And uh, sure. our state, um, uh, having been taken over by the ANC, who have presumably liberated us and um, have not taken any steps to, to, con to conclude this um, uh, liberation in a sense of enabling, creating an enabling environment mm. for the development and creation of black, black, black banks, yes. black insurance companies. Sure. And enabling means that also providing them with cash, right? Mm. Because enabling sure. is not just a legislation because the, the likes of, a, of, a, of a APSA and Standard Bank um, and FNB and, and have, have lived off the state. Uh, uh, both in terms of the business given to them by the state sure. and um, um, easy access to funding. The, the reserve bank is funding banks um, and, and there's not a single black bank that has ever benefited from, uh, from the, the cheap money from, from the reserve bank. And, and, and you can go into um, how the Africanas created laws that enabled um, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the prosperity of the African farmers, right? They, mm, they, mm. they gave them subsidies, they gave them land, uh, they, they, they gave them scientific support, mm. they built a rail infrastructure to, to the most far-flung areas of the country uh, mm. because they wanted those farmers to get access to the market. Sure. They, they, I mean, they made sure that in those um, far-flung, the most isolated uh, a farm area would have a telecom, uh, it would have electricity, it would have hmm. rain. So that's that's an enablement. Right? Sure, and that's the, the black people have never had any intervention from the state from for enablement and yet are expected to compete. And this hmm. to me is a part of the racism that uh, sets 
uh, lighter or enabling conditions for white business and, and very difficult conditions for black business and then ridicule black business when black business <laughs> fails. So, and, and our state has not been able to do that. Uh, and sadly, uh, it's because um, the, the black politicians uh, have never had to support the development of a new economy because they were co-opted into the old white economy mm. through BE. Oh, so, yes, yes. so they never had to work for their wealth. They never had to build anything new. They never had to compete with the white business. Sure. And, and therefore did not see the need um, uh, to, to go about establishing mechanisms for black business to thrive so that it can, uh, it can uh, uh, compete and succeed against the white business. Talking about the BEE now that you mention it, is it still working? Is it a, vi a viable um, you know, option for black businesses to actually thrive and grow and compete yeah. into the economy? Is it? B is not for, for the advancement of black business. Yeah. What is it for then? No, it is not. Um, it, it is for the protection of white business against black competition. Um, That's a good statement. It is, uh, because you, you have to look at what this thing delivers, right? Sure. That uh, in terms of the current BE laws, you know, all banks are level one BE, which means they don't have to do anything to transform now, as, as they are. Right? Sure. And the majority of uh, insurance companies are level one BE. Um, and then at the same time, black businesses struggle to, to become level one BE because uh, some of the headers that they've put in there for you to become a black business is that you must now fund the development of other of other black business and you're struggling yourself um, to, uh, to to grow in progress mm -hmm. and they settle with you the responsibility that should have been carried only by white business because mm -hmm. white business have historical advantage from which they can invest into developing other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so when you are a black business and the, the law says you must develop other black business where do they say you get the money from because you're hustling definitely right uh, you, you don't have the luxury of um, um, uh, spare cash to invest in developing other business. So mm. you, you look at uh, the, the likelihood of black business achieving a high BE scorecard, right? it's, it's at zero. But the likely one, it's, it's minimal, but the likelihood of white business achieving mm. um, a higher BE scorecard is, 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 is high. Now you tell me, if you are the state and you want to empower black people, why do you make it possible for black business, for white business to be white, to be black? Because mm -hmm. what, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, and, and it's not so much that they become black, because I mean, we know oh, a lot of these companies that are showing level one BE are uh, uh, some of the least transformed organizations you can ever find. But why, why must priority be the transformation of white business to become black? Why is it no pri There is what? no piece of law that is about the development of black business. Black it business, doesn't yes. exist. Mm. The, yeah. the, the only time that uh, the ruling party tried anything that remotely resembles that was the black industrialist program, the hard yes, black yes. industrialist Remember program. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, this is something that happened about 22 years after the generation. Sure. Uh, 100 black industrialists, um, uh, yes, welcome, but too little. Uh, sure. In a sense Definitely. that we need a, a thousands of a black industrialists uh, to be developed. So, and and even the, those 100 black industrialists, there's no law mm, uh, mm. that underpins a program. Uh, the law that exists, uh, <coughs> all the transformative transformation laws, uh, sure. have been uh, contaminated uh, uh, to to retain the status quo, and, and they're doing a good job. Because the status quo remains. Sure. Guys, if you are still, you know, listening to this conversation, we are in conversation with, uh, with Mr. Msivi, Kandan Msivi. He's just sharing so, so much of, from his heart, I, I believe that he's pouring from his heart, about the status quo in terms of the black development, especially the township economy. Um, if you're watching this now and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and you see the handles on your screen. Um, we are in conversation with, with Mr. Msivi and Mr. Msivi, you, you have seen, I think you have been, I believe that you have seen also ShopRite coming into the township economy yes. as well. Um, recently they have been um, very, I, I would use the word violent, I don't know if it's a very good word to use, but um, you know, their approach towards the township economy, they are already setting up tax shops, which 
we have been owning the talk show for a long time and um, we have also seen the Somalis and the Pakistan uh, people getting into the communities and taking you know, advantage of that, that space as well. Um, ShopRite is, is doing it in a massive scale right now. Um, do you think that this is the final nail to the coffin in terms of the township entrepreneurs and the tax shops that are there? Certainly, I mean, uh, that's, that, that's a way this thing is going. Um, mm. it, it, uh, uh, for me, it's uh, the entrenchment of the en enslavement of, uh, of black people. Um, mm. uh, in a sense that um, um, you have very powerful enterprises uh, entering a, a market, uh, proclaiming to, to BE. Yes. Uh, mm. And BE talks about enterprise development. And and uh, they're not. There's no. And, and I've already said that um, there is nothing as hypocritical as the BE clause that says de develop other enterprises because no companies get to develop other companies. It's it's a laziness on the part of the state mm. to to make such requirements on the on the, on operating companies. But uh, the 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 entry of a shop right checkers into. Uh, the, um, the townships underscores the very fact that uh, no one is going to develop black business. In fact, they're going to take away from black business as much Oof. as they can. And, and that strategy is not a strategy of, of development. It's a strategy about ShopRite wanting growth and wanting all for, for itself. Um, and uh, w without the state, um, mm -hmm. uh, that is a, a developmental and a supportive of black entrepreneurship. Uh, you, there's nothing illegal that the shop right is doing, uh, mm. but uh, mm. there is nothing positive about about those moves because sure. they are about mopping up um, all sorts of value that uh, exist amongst the black people, and, uh, and 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 it underscores the very point that I made in the in the beginning that um, uh, all of these businesses rely on the township economy. Mm. Uh, all that shop right is saying is that. Um, uh, it's not enough that the black people come out of uh, townships to, mm. to come and buy in suburbs. I'm going to go and fetch it all uh, from, from where they live. And, 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 and to, a, to a large extent, uh, it, it, it nails a, a final nail, it hits a final nail on mm. the survival of, a, of a independent uh, uh, tax shops. I mean, uh, sure. the, 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 the whole idea of independent pharmacies mm. we've been dealt with in the suburbs, independent supermarkets, uh, the old mom and pops that used to exist mm. are fading yeah. away. Uh, so there is that uh, formalization of, um, of um, South Africa's uh, black economy, uh, mm. township economy, but it's been formalized uh, within uh, uh, white institutions. What should we do as small businesses? I'm an entrepreneur yeah. from the township. What should I do? Yeah. Look, um, it's, um, I, I think one thing that you must know is that without the state intervention, uh, mm. we are we're all doomed uh, to, to, to fail or mediocre success. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, state, the state needs uh, to have a deliberate program for the development of black people. Otherwise, we must just accept mm. that um, uh, over, over a period of time, you know, uh, with what uh, not only shop right checkers also pick and pay and probably more smart mm -hmm. is doing in the in the township you you take a period of 10 to 30 years uh, mm -hmm. there'll be no no more uh, retail out outlets that are owned sure. by township dollars and uh, I think even in the in the in the US uh, amongst the uh, black townships okay. um, uh, you find that um, the the ownership of those outlets is uh, from people from outside of the of the uh, of those communities That's because they have the money to establish the, the infrastructure necessary, and and the state has not uh, enabled. Uh, I mean, the NEF is underfunded; it's never been funded uh, ever since it was given three billion rents. Uh, so there isn't sure. an institution that existed for the development of. Uh, I mean, IDC. Uh, yeah, so. the, the, the 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 IDC. I mean, if you were to look at the IDC of apartheid days, right? It, it developed. Uh, School, it uh, created Sasol, mm. um, it, it funded the establishment of Denel and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, it, it, it drove the, the, the survival um, strategy of, uh, of apartheid. Right? Mm. Mm. But our IDC today um, uh, uh, does not drive the developmental agenda. If it has become, uh, in many quarters, people will tell you that 
it's, it's, it's much easier to, to get money from the bank than, than to go to the, the IDC. IDC. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's not developmental at all. If I'm an entrepreneur right now from the township and I have an idea of you know getting into the financial sector, especially the insurance sector, and I have a company called Bizmate, and yeah. probably I want to do a company called Bizmate Insure. And I know that um, with Numsa Investment Company has um, insurance companies under them as well. So yes. what, are, what are the necessary steps that I need to take as an entrepreneur who has this brilliant idea? And it's been maybe yeah. a viewer at home watching this video saying that I also have an idea of doing such. I want to compete as well in the future. Yes. What do you do? I think the, the, the first part is to become a broker right? and mm. uh, build a client base uh, of um, uh, policyholders. Mm. Uh, but you obviously underwrite with, uh, with an insurer. Mm. Uh, you have to be careful about uh, who owns the data and uh, who owns the, the client and uh, what system are you using because the, the one thing that you want to make sure is that you are responsible for the collection of cash sure. uh, and not give it to the, to the insurer because when you do give it to the insurer, Mm. Uh, one day you, you're gonna lose all of those clients. I believe it has happened to a lot of. I've seen with the yeah, with the yeah. loss of data. Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. So you want you want to be in a position where you have your own database, your your own clientele, sure. and and you're working towards a day in which you'll have a create a sufficient critical mass to to register for insurance license because mm. because running insurance license is expensive. Uh, it could cost you. A, a, from a, a, a eight million uh, mm. per month yes. uh, higher to a general insurance license. Okay. So therefore, you need to get your business to a point where it is collecting substantial premium before you can register for insurance company. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And and you will need some capital. So which means that um, whilst you are building the book, then you also have to build a little bit of capital mm. uh, so that uh, by the time you register for insurance, you want to register, you do have the minimum okay. capital. Required. I think they they, they have a minimum capital requirement of about uh, fifteen million rands. Mm, fifteen million rands. Yeah, for a, for a and life insurance. Seems license. easier for Adrian Go to do it, <laughs> but what about yeah. us? I mean, I already yeah. get fifteen million. But on a later note, and also final question to you, say, um, you've been vocal also about um, you know data must fall. Data must fall yeah, I mean, on, yeah. on social media. I've seen yeah. that you, you've been very vocal about it. And the Competition Commission has actually said that um, to so, uh, network providers that if you don't, you know, reduce your 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 rates, uh, we're, we're coming for you. We're going to do that. What do you, what do you think of you know the importance of having data, especially for this younger generation of entrepreneurs, um, utilizing data and having. You know, free accessible data, not just cheap, but free. And maybe yeah. speaking about that state intervention um, of yeah. um, having access to free Wi-Fi or data yes. in, in in our communities. What do you think of that movement? And also, what do you think um, about the network companies? Are they really going to uh, going to go ahead with what the competition commission is saying? Um, I think the, the the first thing is that the data is necessary for um, development uh, these days, uh, mm. in particular, uh, I mean, we want to throw around the, 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 the acronym for IR, mm. uh, which um, um, indicates that everything is going online. Sure. Right? You know, a lot of things, I mean, there's a, a, a banking is, is, is on, on your on your on your phone, mm. you can buy insurance on your phone. Yeah. Uh, there's a there are connected to houses with the um, 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 with the Internet of Things. So there's a lot of development around the, the, uh, the technology sure. and it requires data. Mm. Now, when a country has high levels of unemployment, uh, where we need innovations for people to find jobs, but your data cost is too high. Mm. In particular, when it is uh, too high in comparison to the countries that you compete with, it means that uh, uh, <laughs> the telecommunications companies are struggling in the country. Right? True. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy with what the Competition Commission has uh, ruled on, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I do know that we have a, a timid state. Yes. Uh, the state that is afraid of the private sector, mm. it will not act. Right? It will not surprise me if. Uh, the the commissioner is removed from his job uh, because uh, our oh. yeah, <laughs> because our politicians are shareholders in these uh, 
telecommunications companies. So That's true. you are actually mm. saying that uh, they, they, they should be impoverished and naturally they won't. Uh, so I, I remain um, hopeful but skeptical right, that mm. uh, uh, something will happen uh, yeah. because of uh, uh, the power of uh, these uh, companies that is mm. derived from the participation of uh, sure. politicians in those companies. Let them see. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.